Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. I'm back here at Hunt Day of Trenton. Take a look at a brand new 2024 Hyundai Kona N-Line with all-wheel drive in Atlas White. So we're going to check out the N-Line for the 2024 Kona, see what it's bringing to the market, see if it's bringing that sportiness, that sporty drive, that sporty feel. So let's dig in. Here we are on the front end of this Atlas White Kona N-Line 424. Again, as we've seen on the previous Kona model that we've done, we have that really bold looking front end design where they've dropped the headlights, turn signals down to the sides to match the upper part of the grill as far as height. And then left this whole area up here, all body color, and but we got daytime running lights that shoot all the way over up top so our daytime running lights way up here headlights way down here on this side so it's a big departure from what we saw previously we got gloss black on the grill we got the inline badge on the left side of the grill functionality on the grill top and bottom we have led headlights led daytime running lamps standard bulbs for turn signals so let me know what you think about this new design language on this N-Line Kona. Wheel and tire package on the 24 Kona N-Line. We have a 19-inch machined aluminum alloy wheel, the Hyundai N badge on the center cap, gloss black, silver accents, a lot of action going on on that wheel. Let me know what you think. Standard brake and rotor package. Now, these wheels are wrapped in Kumho Majesty 9 all season tires, 235 on the width, a 45 series sidewall 19s, all four corners, all wheel drive. All right, the full side profile on the Kona N line. I gotta hold this tripod way up in the air because this parking lot is really tight. Don't wanna got a lot of extraneous cars in the shot. So here we go. We got the Atlas white, which really shows off these aggressive body lines. Similar on the side view, I think that you see on the Tucson, here on the smaller Kona, we got the N-Line badge on the front fender, but we, we got some serious 3D definition, especially around the front fender and rear quarter panel as those the fender and the rear quarter flares out over the tires. Hard body lines through the doors. Let me know what you think about this Kona. Coming in closer, we have that N-Line badge right on the front fender looking good. Side view mirror is gloss black with LED turn signals, color matched on the front and rear door handle. Fuel filler is on the left side, and then we got this gloss black roof spoiler coming off the top. Looking really, really snazzy, I think, against the white paint. Let me know what you guys think. Up on the roof, we're color matched with a gloss black shark fin antenna with gloss black on the roof rails. And then we have that sunroof up top as well. All right, the back end of the Kona. I love this. Roof spoiler coming off the top. I think it looks really, really cool. But we have a huge spoiler up here. We could have easily taken this rear wiper and stuck it up, cleaned up the back end, protected from the elements and car washes. So I think that would have been something good. They did it with the Tucson. They could have done it here. Now, we have LED taillights coming all the way across. Up top, looks cool. Hyundai badge and then Kona, all brushed aluminum look. H-Track or Hyundai's version of all-wheel drive and then the 1.6 turbo badge. On the turn signals, they're standard turn signals right over here on the side, which is the only place they can put them with this new design. So let me know what you think. Then we are going to go brushed aluminum or dark chrome in here. And then we're going to go flat black on the rear diffuser area with a functional dual exhaust, but all on the right side. Let me know if you think we, they should have split that up. But overall, it's a pretty wicked cool back, and I really love that, that roof spoiler. Under the hood of this 24 Kona, we have Hyundai's 1.6 liter turbocharged inline four cylinder engine mated to an eight speed automatic transmission with paddle shifters, 190 horsepower, 195 pound feet of torque, MPGs, 24 in the city, 29 on the highway, 26 combined. The engine's minimum octane rating is 87, so you can run this on regular unleaded gas. All right, before we get into the interior of this Kona N-Line, you're going to go, Mike, 
I'm loving the looks of this Kona N line. So far, liking the horsepower. What am I going to be looking at for a price on this car? Well, here we go. Base price for the 24 Kona N line all wheel drive is 32,150. Now, this particular vehicle has some options, so we have to add in an additional 450 for the Atlas white paint. An extra 210 for the carpeted floor mats, an extra 55 for the cargo net, an extra 30 for the first aid kit, an extra 120 for the mud guards, an extra 70 for the wheel locks. We then add in destination and delivery of $1,335 from Hyundai's Ulsan Korea assembly plant. And we have a total MSRP from the factory for this vehicle of $34,420. Let's check out the interior. Starting with the foot box, a nice large dead pedal brake and accelerator, all aluminum finish, proper foot box there for a sporty vehicle. The carpeted floor mats are in the cargo area at this time. Door sill plate, look at that. We got the checkered flag door sill plate here in the inline corner to welcome you to the vehicle. That's a really nice touch. Now, seats, we have power seats with lumbar for the driver, manual assist for the front passenger. And then we have what Hyundai calls the N-Line Sport Combination Seats. So we have this fake leather out here. I'm not sure the official name Hyundai gives it. It's h -Tex. It's not soft -Tex, that's Toyota, but it's h -Tex or something like that. With the red, we have Alcantara. As you can see the sticker, brand name Alcantara insert. With the stripes, looks really good. Headrest looks really nice. The N embroidered into the seat on both front seats. Really well done on the interior. Door panel now. This is very, very strange. We have this nice seat. Here's the passenger seat. Looking beautiful with the Alcantara, with the, with the uh, stitching. And then you get to the door panel and all you got is hard black plastic, a black door handle, right? Super hard armrest and flat black on the switch gear. And that's it. There is nothing else. It's very, very strange. There's no stitching on it. There's no va 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 voom at all on the door panel. I'm wondering what Hyundai's doing here on the door panels because the rest of the interior looks terrific. But I guess it is what it is. And now we have our soft touch up here. We got some nice red in here. Goes into the heat and air rent for that end line vibe. Then we have an area for storage up here. And then down below, you get a nice large glove box. All right, here we go with the 12.3 inch Hyundai Next Generation infotainment system. Wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto. Now, why am I saying that? Because it will be wireless with an over-the-air software update that Hyundai is going to provide these systems. So we are going to go wireless CarPlay, wireless Android Auto. Now, if you buy one, it might not be wireless right away. You may need to get that over-the-air software update. So it may be wired until that update comes through to your system, but it's going to be wireless. So thank you, Hyundai, for that. Look at this beautiful response pinch to zoom. Looks really good. We got dual panel action, but now it's a window inset into the larger screen, which I think is a better look to this. We activate our weather, see what happens. Now nah, I can't, I got to use Blue Link. But we'll get our, our, our um, compass up there. So a really nice system. Now we can go to our home and then you can configure your home panel however you would like with whatever you want to have up here. So that's really, really good. I like that. Nice and easy to flip around too. And then you can go over here and you can do your profile settings. You get your online uh, user's manual for the car, right? So they got you set there. And now you have add favorites. If you want to add favorites. Now we do have heart controls down here, which I like. So we can use that to go to setup. And now we got setup right here. We got our vehicle setup. Navigation, sound, user profiles, Bluetooth, your phone, all that jazz. We can go to our vehicle setup. We can go to our climate setup if we would like to. And we can go ahead and do set up how we would like the air to come in. We can go to our light setup, have the lights turn on, whatever you want to do there. We can go to our door setup. I mean, there's a lot of action going on in here. We can go to... Go into lights. I think it's going to give us the same thing, which it does. Interior is on high beam assist, headlight delay, one touch turn signal, 
So they got some stuff there. What I don't see in here, we try convenience, is ambient lighting, which I do not see. So it doesn't look like we have ambient lighting in this vehicle, which is too bad because I think that would have been a nice touch in here. But we can go back to setup and you're back to the beginning. Go back to map, you're back to the beginning. And then if we put this car in reverse, we have a nice large backup camera with trajectory. No 360 degree camera in the end line, but nice and clear. I wish it just took up the whole screen rather than leaving this blank like that. But what are you going to do? It is what it is. Go back to park. There you have it. More of this red in through the heat and air vents. Again, I already mentioned we had the hard controls for infotainment, volume knob, tuning knob down below, dual climate. So they got you covered there for dual climate control, which I like. And then down further, here you go. You got your 12 volt and then you got a couple of USB C's. And then underneath that, let me get that closed. Underneath that, we got a wireless charging pad. So they got you covered there. Underneath that, you got three stage heated seats for the driver and the front passenger and your drive modes, which we'll show you when we go through the dash. And then we have our auto vehicle hold. Down further, you got two cup holders. You got the new Hyundai key fob for 2024. I don't know if I like this one or the old one better. This was a lot lighter. Lock, unlock, remote start, and you got your panic button. Kind of looks like a big egg. And then we have our fairly firm center armrest. We can open that up. We got a little tray. We can take that out, and we got another area for storage. Hyundai steering wheel, nice leather wrap wheel, nice stitching. Really like that. The end badge down here on the bottom. It is an oblong wheel. Uh, rather than round, but flat bottom might have been better because my knee is going to hit getting in and out of this car uh, on this wheel. The trim ring looks good on the left here. We have flat black on the switch gear where we have our safety suite controls on the left and controls for the digital dash that we have in front of us. On the right, you get your telephone voice commands, modes for your infotainment screen, and your favorites button. Here are the paddles where you can manually go up and down the gears, this eight-speed auto. Headlights on the left, front and rear wipers on the right. Over here on the left side, right and dim the dash, traction control off, hill descent control, and then you have your electronic parking brake. Down on the floor is where you pop your fuel filler, way down there. Now, steering wheel, we have a manual tilting, wow, that's stiff, tilting and telescoping wheel. So I like the fact Hyundai's got that going on. And then here is our 12.3 inch digital dash, looking good. We take our dial that's on the center stack and we can go to snow, normal, and sport. And look at that action when you go to sport. That's pretty cool. Let's try that again. Normal, sport. That's pretty neat. And then snow. But with an inline, we're going to leave this in sport for today. And then there's additional information you can go through in the center as well that you may want to see when you're out on the road. So fairly easy, and it looks good. Now, the gear shift is right out of the Ionic series. It's on the column, and in order to get it to work, let me see if I can do this, you twist it down for reverse like that. Twist it up twice for drive, and then push the end for park. Overhead console, we have LED lighting up here. You want that to come on and off when you open and close the door. This button remains in the center. When you open the door, lighting comes on. Close the door, lighting goes off. Emergency SOS button in case there's an emergency on the road. Hyundai Blue Link, so you can hit, hook the uh, car up with your phone. And then we have the sunroof, and we got the power shade. And I like that rather than a manual shade. That's a nice touch. And in one touch, back the shade goes, wind buffer comes up, back goes the glass, and now we can shut it. And back comes that. One little tap, and you can just open the shade. And you can tilt it as well. And now we have our sun visor with vanity and an LED light. So that's a nice touch. And does it slide? Yes, it does. 
sitting in the back seat of the Kona. I have the seat set for my driving position. We'll jump on in. Nice. You have to duck a little bit. I'm five foot eleven. Once I get in, plenty of headroom, shoulder width room, plenty of room for my knees. They definitely made the Kona bigger, which I like. We have that soft text material or H text material, whatever the heck you want to call it. Leatherette. There you go. Fake leather with the stitching. Plastic back here though, and no seat pocket. But we do have a cargo net behind the front passenger. Eh. Now, center console, we got, again, the heat and air vents back here with the red, which is a nice touch, and two USB-Cs for connectivity and a little spot next to it for some storage. So they got you covered. But here we go again with the mystery door panels. We have all these nice seats. We have the, the combination Alcantara with the faux leather. And then we have door panels that look like they're out of a base venue. Sorry, Conde, but it's true. Here's your front door panel. Here's the back door panel. All hard black plastic. Nothing to jazz it up like we see on the rest of the interior. It's really a mystery to me. Now we come back. Again, the nice seats with the Alcantara insert. Looking beautiful with the stitching. And then we have an armrest. You take that out. Semi-soft. Two cup holders. So there you go. It's comfortable back here. And I like the way everything in this interior is laid out. I just don't understand why Hyundai just decided to skip on the door panels altogether. It's very strange. All right, getting in the cargo area of the Kona N-Line, it's not an automatic tailgate, so you gotta come to the back, the button underneath the N in Kona, and just lift up nice and light. And when you get the tailgate up, what you're looking at is 25.5 cubic feet of cargo space with the rear seats up. We move in a little bit closer. Here are the Kona N-Line carpeted floor mats I mentioned earlier, and I like that they have that embroidered in which is a nice touch and then underneath here we got a jack and a spare so thank you Hyundai for the spare we got some LED lighting in the back no 12 volt that I can see and we have this pesky tonneau cover which I'm not a huge fan of so we got to take this down now we got it down we can drop the rear seats by just hitting these levers push them up and then push forward push these up and then push forward now we'll put our tonneau cover back up, if I can do it with one hand. You can take this out and get rid of it, you don't want it. Now with the rear seats down and that tonneau cover out, you're going to have 63.7 cubic feet of space in the back of this Kona. Window sticker on this 2024 Kona end line, we'll zoom on in. Standard features on the left. Options over here on the right. MSRP. Fuel economy estimates. Made in Korea. Let's take her out for a spin. All right, we're driving this 2024 Kona N-Line in Atlas White. Feels nice, right? Steering feels nice. We're in sport mode. I got the steering feels real good. Well damped, feeling good. No rattles, no vibrations coming through the chassis, which I like. Really smooth on the tires. Of course, we got all season, so it should be smoother. Uh, really, really well done on the driving experience so far. Love the fact that we got dual 12.3 inch screens. And I love the fact that we got the next generation Hyundai infotainment system in here, which with a software update is going to be wireless CarPlay and Android Auto. Finally, finally, that's come through. I love the interior design uh, with the red and with our USB-C action, wireless charging, heated seats. Would have been nice to have a heated steering wheel in here, especially living up in the Northeast. Um, still a mystery to me why the door panels look so terrible compared to the rest of the interior, but I guess you gotta cut costs somewhere to fit a price point. Not sure if that's where I would have done it, but it is what it is. Now with this turbo engine, we got a 1.6 liter turbo, eight speed auto with paddles, like that, 190, 195. 190 on the horsepower, 195 on the torque. 
So <clears throat> before we get into how this drives, this is another thing that is leaving me quite curious. The 2024 Kia Seltos is the sister car to the 2024 Hyundai Kona. And the Seltos is a more traditional subcompact SUV shape than the Kona is. The upper level trims in the Seltos get the same engine and same transmission as this. 1.6 liter turbo in line four, eight speed automatic with paddles. The Seltos is 195 horsepower, 195 pound-feet of torque. The Kona is 190 horsepower and 195 pound-feet of torque. Why? I know it's only five horsepower, but why is the Seltos, which is not billed as a sport subcompact SUV, like this is, have more horsepower than this? They should have the same. It's their sister vehicles. That's another thing I find strange. And the Seltos is lighter than this Kona. The Seltos with the all-wheel drive is going to be around 3,250, 3,300 pounds. This is 3,500 pounds. So the Seltos is a couple hundred pounds lighter too. And it, and it holds about the same amount of stuff. Everything else is pretty much even. So I find that very curious that he is not building the Seltos like Hyundai's bill in this end line, and I just find it odd that they're not consistent when it comes to the horsepower that they, these vehicles put out. And I, it just seems odd. So those are the couple oddities I have with this vehicle. The door panel, the lack of door panel design, uh, and the fact that you can go buy a Kia Seltos, get a more traditional subcompact SUV shape, if you don't like the looks of this Kona, which is pretty brave and bold, and then get more horsepower and get a lighter car that probably is going to perform better than this. Just saying. Just saying. Now let me know what you think about that. Well, once we get up here and get out of the way, I'll come back to you, get this guy out of our way, I'll come back to you. And we'll see how this is actually going to uh, going to drive. All right, we're, we uh, got some open road ahead of us now. We lost the landscaper, and here we are on this with this Kona N line. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do an emergency stop once I get around this turn and get some some straightaway. In three, two, one. Yep, yep, yep. Stops really well. Stops on a dime, no problem. And then off we go. No problem. Feels good. Feels good. How about a turning radius test? 17.4 feet on the turning radius, just like a Seltos. And it whips right around. No problem. The all-wheel drive getting the power to the ground. And down the road we go. No problem. So that's fine. That It feels good. It feels really good. The steering feels really good. Got good visibility out the windshield, side glass, side view mirror, blind spot monitoring, cross traffic alert, lane keep assist, all that jazz is in this Kona. So they got you covered with all that safety tech. Picks up nicely, gets the car up to speed, no problem.
All right, I've been trying to stay quiet just to kind of give you an idea of what the car sounds like, what you can hear. Obviously, you're going to get some wind noise. You're going to get some road noise. You're going to be able to hear the engine. It's not a silent cabin at all in this Kona N-Line. Uh, but what we are going to do here is we're going to go ahead and see how this does with our uh, highway merge. See how this thing picks up and gets up to highway speed here in a minute. And I'll be right back with you. All right, we're going to get on the highway. I have it in manual. We're going to hit some sport action, see what happens. Takes, takes it really nice and planted around this curve. Really well done even with the all-season tires. Paddles are on the wheels. I prefer them on the, uh, the uh, steering column rather than the wheels. But we're right up to speed, no problem. Good shifts on the way up. When we get off up here, we'll see how the shifts are on the way back down uh, but 8-speed is performing well here we go see how this does when we slow down do some down shifts see how she does and holds that line really well again our tires are letting it down a little bit And then we're back. And we're all set. And we're back to normal. And we're all we're all set. So <clears throat> there you have it. A little extended drive here with this Kona end line, but let me know what you think. What I want to know from you guys is has Hyundai made a big mistake with this end line you heard what I had to say so have they made a big mistake with this vehicle yes or no let me know what you think about it in the comments but I want to thank all of you for watching I'd also like to thank Hyundai of Trenton for allowing the channel access to this 2024 Hyundai Kona end line for a review today I'd like to thank all of you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like. Please also consider subscribing and turn on that notification bell so you'll never miss another Shabby's Rides video. And I'll see all of you on the rebound. Take care, everyone.